Okay, so on to the next track in Campbell Smoking Lyrical Tail Slides. As you guys know, well, if you don't know and you're only joining us now, we are um, going through Aesop Rock's, uh, Rock's album. Aesop, I don't know why I don't say that correctly. Aesop Rock's album. Um, we're not going through the entire album. We're only doing nine songs that has been uh, previously selected by uh, Campbell Cravens. Basically, his sort of favorite um, um, tracks on the album. And uh, we're going to go through it in the, the order that he's given me over here. This one over here is called Mindful Solutionism. Um, for those of you who are only joining us now, I did do the intro just one video ago. You can go back this series is going to go over three days until we actually finish that and uh, I'm very excited for this over here so and the concept already sounds very cool somewhat dystopian but also sort of human progression um, but yeah let's see what we got over here ASAP rock a sup rock mindful solutionism as you guys know how we do we first listen to the entire track uninterrupted and then afterwards we go into um, the lyrical breakdown and see if i can sort of get my head around what he's trying to say so uh let's begin with this man uh, mindful solutionism let's go 2.5 million years ago a friend of mine made a tool from a stone and defended his tribe as technology sorry for the technical term it's a wheel and a fire and the rest is a blur Throw a theorized plot in the pot with applied science, let it sit I bet it streamlines your environs, yeah What's a resource local to the grotto? The method isn't free until the mechanism follow that Technology, innovate a difference A feat of engineering, a system made efficient There isn't a condition, complication, a revision Where the answer is mm. a more sophisticated widget Idiot, tired of games, bronze age, iron age Weaponry in stellar form, shelter finer by the day Livestock and vegetables and roads behind the hideaway Mesopotamia out the motherfucking lion cage <laughs> Also like the visuals over there. You take a lever and a pulley and a winch and a wedge She get a labyrinth of aqueducts and pyramid steps Before the Jesus Archimedes on that miracle tech Year zero, you can build a future rib in its head Put a shoe on a horse, shoot a man with a gun Steam powered by focals and mechanical funk Manipulate electricity, now but cannot be done Yes it can, ain't a dam that could cancel the flood True to human curiosity At the tree of knowledge, pulling genies out of bottles Stealing from Leonardo's, plane train auto, hauling Space age cargo, bizarre technology. technology. Every day is tomorrow. Telegraph, telephone, you can learn doors, simple kids from a cozy G at Desert Dome in Sydney. You could write a letter with no paper, you could fix anything with a laser. Get a robot limb for your blown off limb. Later on, the same technology can automate your gig. As awesome as it is, wait, it gets awful. You could split an atom willy nilly if it's energy that comes to for killing, then it will be. It's not about a better knife, it's chemistry and genocide and medicine for tempering the heck in a projector light. Agent Orange, leaded gas, cigarettes, cameras in your favorite corners, plastic in the wilderness. We cannot be trusted with the stuff that we come up with. The machinery could eat us, we just really love our buttons. Um, technology, focus on the other shit. 3D printed body parts, dehydrated onion dip. You could buy a jet ski from a cell phone on a jumbo jet. C-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y, it's the ultimate. That's the Blackbird. That is a fucking fire track. What a what a great track to sort of begin the album after that intro over there. Um, okay, so you can kind of see um, 
where he's going with this because he's taking it all the way back right to the beginning of man where he invents like very simple tools and in the invention of the wheel and things like that and it's literally that was technology and he literally says that sorry for the technical term but that is what it was right it was it was technology of the time actually to to literally carve a stone into a sort of a, a cylindrical sort of round object um, to get that rolling that was technology as primitive as it was and uh, uh, um, as uh, uh, simple as it was that began the progression of humanity and as we progress we progress we progress we're very very good at adapting human beings are fantastic at adapting we're very very bad at preventing right we're not good at preventing um so a, a lot of the times we will do something and we'll kick the can down the road kick the can down the road and then um we'll be like okay well now through all of this industrialization that we've done we kind of affected the planet now um we need to do something we need to do something about that essentially so we will adapt we will develop the technologies um to somewhat subvert that somewhat uh, um subvert that but like again we're good adaptive creatures just very very bad preventative creatures but uh let's go from the actual beginning over here um uh, and let me actually open up the lyrics over here and follow along and okay let's try and see and break this down 2.5 million years ago let's start from that over there let's go five million years ago a friend of mine made a tool from a stone and defended his tribe's technology sorry for the technical term it's a wheel and a fire and the rest is a blur for a theorized plot in the pot with applied science let it sit i bet it streamlines your environs yeah what's a resource local to the grotto the method isn't free until the mechanism follow that so the Okay, so let's begin. So 2.5 million years ago, a friend of mine, so it's like a friend of mine being that we're all descendants of cavemen, we're all descendants of uh, um, um, sort of uh, um, ancient uh, um, civilizations, obviously. Um, a friend of mine made a tool from a stone and defended his tribe, 100%, right? Already then, the primal instinct was create tools to defend your tribe. And eventually, we evolved past that. Eventually, the hierarchy of humanities literally was, okay, so you go out and hunt, you bring food um um the, the the woman looks after the children you the man brings the food uh back to the to the tribal camp or to the cave whatever it was and then they protected their family right that was a very dangerous um sort of scenario because you were very vulnerable essentially then we went from that to from sort of individualism to going into tribalism, saying we actually would operate better with the tools that we have. Not only can we go out and hunt more, not only can we look after our communities better because we actually have a community of people, not only can our kids learn better by interaction with each other, uh, we can also put our heads together to sort of develop better tools. So as a tribe, we will go and collect and we'll come back and we'll... Uh, uh, um, um, defend our territory um, together and then we moved past that into an era where it was kind of like okay so now what we can do is we can actually now that we've built our sort of tribes and our nations and things like that we can actually have a dedicated group of people that farm a dedicated group of people that teach a dedicated group of people that uh, deal with uh, uh, health a dedicated group of people that are the, the the sort of military and then we can put someone in place that can govern us right and then what we can do is once once we pool our resources we give portions of our resources to the government and the government can then distribute can distribute that for services and safety right for the actual people so literally hierarchically that's how we sort of moved up in a, from a civilizational era right and when you do that you sort of allow uh, um, freedom and space for humanity to innovate for humanity to develop new systems for the humanity to develop and and sort of progress to a certain degree so um that's uh, that's basically the, the beginning part was you know it all started from a tool and a stone and he defended his tribe and then from there we literally spiraled off into uh, um, a lot of progression and a lot of innovation um it's technology sorry for the technical term it's not really technical but it's it's 
the the it is technical and isn't technical but he's basically saying it's basic but it's not really because from a cert from from a a spoon from like a stone and a, like a as much of a, of a stone and a, um from a tool and a stone eventually that was the catalyst for a lot more technical things that came down you know centuries afterwards um but anyway it's a it's a wheel then a, then a fire and the rest is a blur so it almost feels like that so the thing is that we create and the, i like the fact that he used the wheel and then a fire and the rest is a blur because once we had a way of motion and once we had a way of energy to produce energy so fires energy wheel being motion being able to cart things from place to place those are quite arguably two of the most important things in societies today and has always been, right? It, moving stuff from place to place and literally creating the energy that powers up everything. The rest is a fucking blur. Once we created that, there was no stopping man, right? So um, it says, nah, uh, throw a theorized uh, plot in the pot with applied science. That's very fucking cool. So it's basically you come up with a theory, you're not entirely sure if the theory is going to work, but you throw it in kind of like a melting pot of uh, um, ideas and then you apply science to it, right? Observable science, so science like that, that literally people went out and observed and what can we do and what if we do this and how if we manipulate that and stuff like that. And we developed on that and then we started developing some sort of crazy things, but like it's a melting pot of amazing ideas crazy ideas that we didn't quite know uh, um, whether it would work or not. Nobody nobody ever thought we could split the atom, right? Until at a certain point, that was actually, uh, um, 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 uh, it was achieved by the, uh, it was actually a German scientist or two German scientists that uh, managed to split the atom. And then the news went around the world where that was possible. And that eventually got to Oppenheimer, who then, first didn't believe it and then afterwards the moment he realized that that was true the first thing he thought of was how can we apply that level of energy to better benefit humanity yet the first thing that came into his mind is we can just make a big fucking bomb right that's a lot of energy right and specifically in wartime you could say we could apply this kind of energy obviously we're not talking of the of the moral aspect in here but uh yeah anyway carry on uh let it uh, let it sit i bet it streamlines your uh it streamlines your environs environs in terms of what environment it streamlines your environment surely because as you develop it will streamline as we develop technology and as we develop better solutions obviously it's going to streamline your environment uh what's a resource local to the grotto now grotto obviously is sort of like these caves that these under sort of they can be underwater caves and they also can be under the mountain caves where they've got all these like what do they call those fucking things um that that grow uh, sort of down Anyway, what's a resource local to the grotto? What's a resource local to the grotto? So I think it's also, when he talks about resource, um, it's, it's kind of the resources that it sort of hides under the ground. I'm not entirely sure. The, mes the method isn't free until the mechanism follows. So that actually is very cool. So... Okay, I think now I'm, I'm understanding that what's a resource local to the grotto, the method isn't free until the mechanism follows. Absolutely. So what's the point of having all of these valuable resources beneath the ground if there's no way to extract them from the ground, right? And this is actually a solution, uh, an issue that Africa was having a, uh, um, for quite a while where it's the richest continent in, uh, in terms of uh, minerals, in terms of uh, precious, uh, precious metals, in terms of diamonds, in terms of uranium, in terms of cobalt in terms of lithium and things like that but the reason why a lot of the times they were able to get exploited is because they didn't have the technology to actually extract that out of the ground all of those resources underneath your feet without the ability to extract them right uh, and to manufacture them is completely and utterly pointless right it, it means absolutely nothing you're not rich unless you can take those out and fabricate them and uh, the western civilization obviously after pillaging africa for all its resources surely possessed all of the technology 
And uh, they then afterwards went to Africa and said, listen, you know, we want your resources. So let's sort of put together some contracts and things of this, of that nature um, so that you can make money off your own resources. And if you don't want to do this kind of deal, that's fine. We've got the technology. We patent the technology. You will never be able to have the technology unless we come through and mine those minerals ourselves. Um and then we can make you rich. You, we can be rich. We can make you rich. This is kind of like a partnership type of thing, right? It's exploitative to a certain degree, but, uh, um, the whole idea over there is just what's the point of resources? Uh, and that's why I think that's what he's playing to. What's a resource local to the grotto? The method isn't free until the mechanism follows. So basically it may seem like it's free. It may seem like all of these riches given by God or whatever, however you decide to say, let's call it the Big Bang Theory, let's call it just nature and whatever else. Um, but what's the point of all those resources if you aren't able to have the mechanics to bring them out the earth um, to enrich yourself from it? So um, I think that's what he's playing into into that. Very, very, very cool. I like the way where he's going with this. Anyway, let's carry on. Miss and follow that. Technology, innovate a difference, a feat of engineering, a system made efficient. There isn't a condition, complication, a revision where the answer rate to build a more sophisticated widget. Idiot, tired of games, bronze age, iron age, weaponry and stellar form, shelter finer by the day. Livestock and vegetables and roads behind the highway. Mesopotamia out the motherfucking lion cage. <laughs> Okay, fire. Okay, so anyway, so carrying on over there, it says he starts with that technology innovate a difference, right? So it's, it's all about innovation. And the more you innovate, the more you innovate. As you saw, kind of saw the progression of technology once we got to a certain pinnacle point, which was like around the Y2K, the Y2K era, the, uh, um, uh, yeah, era where it was like 2000. The, the better our technology got, the better our technology got. And then it was just rapid. Like if you actually look at the exponential expansion, the exponential development and innovation that we did in just a short 25 years, it is absolutely staggering. It's mind blowing. And where you actually see um, the most impressive part of that is not really in like the, the sort of like, let's say cars and cell phones and things like that. That got very impressive, surely, no, no doubt, right? From what we got from like the first iPhone or what we got from like a Nokia up until the iPhone 15 that we have now. Um, functionality is incredible. But if you look deeper, if you go down to the deeper uh, foundation of that, it actually came down to computing power and computing power has exponentially increased. Like when I say it literally had a compounding effect to the point that it was literally leaping itself year on year in terms of compute, it was like a it was, it started off at a, I don't know, a couple of million computations. Then it went to a billion computations. Then it went to five billion computations. Then it went to 200 billion computations. Now, like a, a normal iPhone is sitting at what, five trillion computations a second, right? So literally the brain power of these machines has exponentially just absolutely exploded in a very short 25 years. Now, when you have that level of processing power, Right. That means your development is going to absolutely skyrocket, because if you can have a brain that can do multiple computations in a fraction of a second, right, it means you're getting a high level of efficiency, which means when you get a high level of efficiency, you get a high level of production. When you get a high level of production, you get a high level of development. When you get a high level of development, you get a high level of innovation. Right. So um, and that just absolutely compounds itself. Um, the f so over here, going off that line, that technology in a innovative difference, a feature of engineering, a system made efficient. I spoke about the efficiency, right, in terms of what uh, efficiency means. And that all comes down to computational power, right? So it started off with our own computational power up to the point that we were actually able to take um, that and literally sort of thread that into a silicone chip, which creates these information compu computational highways, right? Where it starts, it started off with like one lane and can only do certain processes within that lane. So if you actually think of like, let's say a Ford F-250, right and you got like a one lane highway essentially right that ford f-250 with the trailer can only take a certain amount of load it can only travel and it can only do one thing in one lane 
basically, if you think about a, comp a computer chip. And then if you add a lane, now you have two Ford F-250s that can carry double that load, right? Which means that you can get a lot more through that, uh, uh, um, through that sort of two lane highways. And that's what happens with these threads on these uh, uh, um, computer chips, right? And the more sophisticated they got, the more threads they got, and the more high, the more lanes that opened up into the highway up until the point that we are now so efficient that we can carry loads and loads of information um, on the same highway at a very fast and efficient way. Right. Um, there isn't a condition, a complication or revision. There isn't a condition, complication or revision where the answer ain't to build more surface for sophisticated versions. Obviously, that's literally that's just how man is. And even if we land up tempting, you know, we, 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 we sort of tempting fate. We play with very dangerous things, specifically in microbiology, specifically in uh, genetics, specifically in the, the two things that we should have never, ever touched as, as a human race was there were two nuclei we never should have touched. The genetic nuclei and we should have never touched the uh, um, atomic nuclei. That's two things that we should have just stayed away from. But hum human beings are curious. And because of their curiosity, we consistently... Actually, now that I actually thought about the, the curiosity, I, I'm now understanding the fucking hook that he has over here. The cat's out of the bag. The cat out of the bag is playing into like Schrodinger's cat. That natural thing of being curious it's like the cat is both dead and alive it could be also it's playing into the curiosity of a cat right which is like also playing into okay let's get to that to the chorus let's get to the chorus because now we're just going off off thing when we get to the chorus we'll explain that uh there is a condition complicated revision uh where the answer ain't to build uh ain't to build more sophisticated widgets obviously we're always going to try and build, even if it's at our own demise ar we know the risks of ar we know how dangerous it can get if we let it run away from us there's no ways to bring that back right it's, it's arguably more dangerous than nuclear weapons itself um idiot now with the i like the way he says idiot the way he spoke it in the lyrics are I-D-G-E-T and even the way he he sort of pronounces that it's almost sounding like a widget but idiot because we idiotic to play with certain things but we'll do it anyway because we we we're, we're curious and a lot of the times we don't really think about our own demises right at the time we only sort of realize that once once we've made the mistake, oh, okay, maybe, you know, it could come to a point where we're not going to be able to reverse from that anymore. Tired of gains, Bronze Age, Iron Age, weaponry in stellar form, Schiller finer by the day. So I think what he's actually talking about is tired of games, Bronze Age, Iron Age, in terms of like actually creating weapons for a purpose. So the thing is that we created weapons to fight wars because there were always wars back in the day, right? Someone was always fighting somebody. So there was a deep necessity for actually building weapons to fight the war that was currently happening. You needed to develop the weapons because the imminent threat of someone invading your territory was very, very high. Now today... I say today, I mean, we, we kind of, we kind of, uh, um, sort of going off the, off the kill here and be going off tilt at the moment in the world. But what happened in the last, I don't know, a uh, couple of decades was that we were, wep we were building weaponry for weaponry sake. So we were building sophisticated weapons mainly for deterrence and less for fighting actual wars. Right. And that actually became a massive problem because, um, after World War II, you know, the, you, we went into the Cold War. And there was so much money that turned the economy that was that was being pumped into uh, the military complex that turned the economy specifically for the Cold War. So there was always a purpose for the military complexes. And there was always a purpose to develop all of those kind of weaponry as well. And when that all sort of collapsed and when uh, in 1991, when the Cold War ended, it was kind of like, OK, wait a second, we've built these massive industries Right, uh, where we were selling weapons and we were we were selling weapons to allies and and uh, uh, things like that, and we were making a hell of a lot of money off it. And now we don't have anything for this military complex. We need to do something, right, so that we can make money. So it's almost like we created all these sophisticated weapons to then ship around the world, like what actually happened with NATO, essentially, right, when the NATO alliance was uh, was created. Um, we were like, okay. 
the creation of the NATO alliance economically made made a hell of a lot of sense, specifically for the United States, because that now sort of reinvigorates our military complex, which means we can now sell weaponry, highly sophisticated weaponry, through all of these different treaties to the multitudes of different countries uh, that are part of NATO. And now part of that is if we can get it to expand, if we can expand NATO into many different countries, it means we can sell more weaponry into many different countries, which means that spins the economy, essentially. It doesn't mean you're actually fighting a war, right? But it's actually developing weaponry for weaponry's sake just to make money. So where he says weaponry in stellar form, shelter, finer. So we're talking about all of the silos with the nuclear weapons and the F-35s where you're not going to get into a dogfight any, anytime soon. America is not going to get into a dogfight with a powerful adversary like Russia. It's just not going to happen. So all those F-35s, as advanced and as incredible as they are, right, as stellar as they are, we're not really using them. It's really just to show other people, look, we've got a better, the better stealth plane. Don't fuck us. We got with the better submarine. Don't fuck with us. Do you, we've got the better uh, uh, um, aircraft carrier. Don't fuck with us. It's all literally there for deterrence, right? Um, shelter and fine about the day, livestock and vegetable. And that's crazy when he says fine about the day. It means the amount of resources and the amount of money, right? Public money that we put into maintaining this type of weaponry, all right? We could put it into the health system. We could put it into the inner cities. We could put it into all of that, but there's no money to really be made there. And there's no money to be made in helping people. There's money to be made in making people sicker. And there's money to be made in selling weaponry that are death machines of war that go and get destroyed destroyed so that we can we can build new ones essentially so um live stock and vegetables in rows behind the hard uh, hardaway which obviously is speaking to the agriculture and speaking to the uh, um uh, the development of agriculture in terms of the rows in terms of how much easier it is in terms of how we plow things all these tractors and things like that it's crazy it's just everything on an industrial scratch weaponry on an industrial uh, uh, uh every weaponry on an industrial scale uh, um um, agriculture on industrial scale, all of that. So technology, he, he's kind of playing with the good and the bad, the weaponry being the bad and obviously the vegetables and growing food at such a rapid rate. I mean, there's good and bad to that. If we start getting into like the GMO conversation, then okay, that's the, that's a bigger story. Uh, Mesopotamia, which I th kind of think was what it was the, the, the West Asian was like the explosion, uh, of, um, 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 sort of in industry, I think in Mesopotamia, I think it's got something to do with West Asia. I can't remember. I, have, I need to read my cap myself on the West uh, Mesopotamia out the, the motherfucking lion cage. So basically now it's like, we can't cage this. This is now running rampant. We, 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 we can't, uh, we can't control this now. I actually love this chorus over here, and that's what I was thinking about. And my mind was going all over the show. I think it's got less to do with Schrodinger's cat, but it might actually have something to do with Schrodinger's cat, where whether the cat is alive or dead, you don't really quite know, right? But you are curious about it, right? You are curious about, okay, you know, you know that the cat is dead, um, but it's not definitive, essentially. Um, and I think it just plays into humans' curiosity. And also it plays using the cat thing is, you know, we've got that whole idea of the cat is very curious. And that's where the saying came from where, you know, curiosity killed the cat, right? And because we're all so curious with a lot of things that we shouldn't be curious about, our demise is probably going once our nine lives have run out. And I think we've gone through quite a few of them specifically with our technological age. The, um, the fact that we've actually sort of uh, uh, managed managed somehow to avoid nuclear nuclear Armageddon through all of the years when you're talking about the Bay of Pigs, when you're talking about the Cuban Missile Crisis, when you're talking about uh, um, um, 
um, broken arrows where uh, America like sort of dropped nuclear weapons on its own things. I mean, they didn't detonate, but they dropped nuclear. There's been a lot of really stupid things that have done uh, that that have happened where we almost came close to nuclear war, right? And it's not because we were smart about it; it's because we were actually terribly fucking lucky that we didn't get into that, right? So we kind of using up our nine lives over here because of our curiosity and all of this kind of thing in developing weaponry that we really do not need right we really do not need outside of the fact that you want to do a suicide pact with another superpower another superpower and be like well you know let's just end both of our they might as well nuke themselves right so it really has no purpose but ironically the paradox of that is we build the weaponry to not fight these wars, but we've got the weaponry in case we fight these wars, right? So it's almost like we build these massive death, <laughs> these massive death pieces of technology, right? To somehow be at peace. You know, it's a very weird thing. And for a long time, it has worked, but um, um, today we're getting eerily close to yet another um, sort of stupid uh, um, disaster that could come uh, and we could not be lucky this time this time you know when the world is in chaos and when the world is in turmoil um, a lot of the times what what sparks these kind of things are mistakes you know what I mean and uh, when you've got so much activity that's happening all around the world with a lot of tensions and things like that um, the likelihood of mistakes happening are quite high so it speaks all into that right so uh, uh, let's carry on <laughs> You take a lever and a pulley and a winch and a wedge She get a labyrinth of aqueducts and pyramid steps Before the Jesus Archimedes on that miracle tech check, check, check. Gear zero, you can build a field your rib in its head Put a shoe on a horse, shoot a man with a gun Steam powered by focals and mechanical funk Manipulate electricity, now what cannot be done? Yes it can, ain't a dam that could cancel the flood Chewing no. human curiosity at the tree of knowledge Pulling genies out of bottles Stealing from Leonardo's Plane, train, auto, hauling Space age cargo, bizarre technology. Every day is tomorrow. Telegraph, telephone. You can blur a door, simple kitsy from my cousin G at Desert Gilman's Sydney. You could write a letter with no paper. You could fix anything with a laser. Mmm. Okay. So let's get into this one very quickly and I'll try and make it a little bit more concise, right? Because also with his type of lyrics, like you, you your brain just goes into different things. And uh, it, Excuse me if it's not exactly correct in what you know in, in my interpretation, but you also need to take into account that this is my first time listen. Essentially, I don't go and sort of research these songs. I'm literally going through it here in real time, right? So for those of you who are like, well, that's not what he meant. Well, yes, okay, we 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 working through it, right? So over here is a you take a lever and a pulley and a winch and a wedge, right? So that was literally the very primitive, the very basic. Uh, 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 um, uh, sort of um, innovations that got us to fucking move very, very heavy object. Very clever, very innovative stuff that is said to be helped to be used to have been used uh, um, to build um, the pyramids as well although you know obviously there's a lot of theories in terms of how that how could that work how could the size of those blocks be moved that high and how could they come down the Nile it just whatever but you never sort of underestimate human uh, um, um, innovation a human human's ability to persevere and human's ability to to uh, um, get around things to get things done you get a labyrinth of um uh, aqueducts and pyramid steps right we, they've built some unbelievably incredible things right the aqueducts in terms of how water uh, would move throughout the city um, and then also in terms of like the pyramid steps and how that got that's still to this very day um, there are experts still sort of theorizing how they built such a thing with such primitive technology all right um over here before the jesus archimedes on the miracle tech i love that because he's talking about the archimedes screw which is obviously the screw that went into the ground and it could literally uh pull up water the application of the screw was monumental it's obviously an application that is used to absolutely 
for absolutely everything. It's used for water pumps. It is used for obviously uh, uh, fastening things together. It's literally what keeps shit together. So a really brilliant way, a brilliant piece of technology from its basic concept to now how it's sort of spiraled into some, excuse the pun, into something that is um, got a like a wide range of applications. Uh, year zero, you could feel the future rearing its head. Um, when I see year zero, I'm pretty sure he's meaning the Y2K. I'm not entirely sure. I think that's kind of like when all the computers like set to zero. You know, there was that whole sort of frenzy where it's like in Y2K, all the computers would, would reset and shit like that. Um, you could feel the future rearing its head, which you could, obviously, because technology was starting to absolutely just skyrocket. Put a shoe on a horse, uh, shoot a man with a gun. Okay, so maybe it's not actually uh, about that. I think he might be talking about a different area, essentially. But obviously, we put a shoe on a horse, shoot a, 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 um, a man with a gun. Um, uh, steam, obviously, created muskets and things like that. Steam power, bifocals, and the mechanical funk. Um uh, uh, manipulate electricity no it can't be done obviously it could be done and obviously there were two different uh, uh, theories who created the ac and dc i think T's dc was created by thomas edison and the ac power was created by tesla um uh, nikola tesla i think that those are the two um, um different ones i think um but this over here is yes it uh, um uh, yes it can ain't a dam that c could cancel the flood i love that when he actually lets a bar because he's playing with the there isn't a dam so a dam obviously holds water back and the dam can't cancel the flood because um, it's literally just going to flow over, essentially. But now what he's talking about a dam is that ain't a dam. We don't give a dam. It's not going to cancel the progression. It's not going to cancel the flood of technology. It's not going to cancel the flood of development, right? So I like the way he played into that. Yes, it can. Ain't no dam that can cancel the, uh, uh, the flood. We've gone through that. True to human curiosity. Again, we're talking about the human curiosity. I spoke about that earlier on, uh, which that's how he plays it back into the cat is as well, as, cu as curious as a cat. Um, at the tree of knowledge, pulling uh, genies out of bottles stealing from leonardo's um plane train auto hauling space age cargo obviously uh stealing from leonardo's plane stealing from leonardo's obviously a leonardo's leonardo is the artist i'm not entirely sure he was an artist and an engineer actually right um and i'm not entirely sure if it's stealing his concepts it could be just stealing his concept. And then anyway, plane, train, auto, obviously, hauling space, age, cargo, sure. Bizarre technology every day is tomorrow, obviously, bizarre technology. We've got a lot of technology that is very weird, right? But because we have the ability, we just create. Not everything needs to be created, but we create to create because it's like a snowball. Even if it's a stupid idea, that can snowball into something that great i mean that's basically how we got the capacitive screen on a on a cell phone essentially i think it was a xerox invention uh that that actually got miniaturized um by steve jobs the other the whole idea got miniaturized and actually the whole touchpad thing uh was taken from xerox it didn't seem like a the greatest idea at the time but there was some sort of application the crazy thing the crazy thing if we're going to talk about sort of military and military uh, technology a lot of the mainstream stuff that we see today in all of our technology had military applications first as well um so yeah anyway um every day is tomorrow telegraph telephone you can't you could flirt with doris I'm not entirely sure which Doris he's talking about. In uh, Poughkeepsie, from a cozy geo, uh, geodes geodesic dome in Sydney. Uh, geodesic dome in Sydney. I'm not entirely sure if he's talking about the Sydney Opera House or he's literally just talking about like literally the future, uh, essentially. Um, you can write a letter with no paper. You can fix anything with a laser. What I like about that, write a letter obviously with no paper, is he's talking about the... Um, um, he's talking about the facts, um, where we had facts at a certain, we, firstly we wrote letters, then we had faxes, and then afterwards we moved into, you don't need any of that, everything is sort of electronic, um, and you don't, you don't need any paper for it, right? Um, but this over here, you can fix anything with a laser, now the applications of a laser is absolutely ridiculous, when, when you're talking about CD-ROMs, when you're talking about medical, when you're talking about military, when you're talking about, uh, uh, um, 
just light and information transfer and all that kind of shit is absolutely ridiculous. So it's almost like it's got a wide range of applications where if you actually think of a hammer as You'd say it's got a wide range of applications, but it's like you can break things with it, you can hammer nails in with it, you can pull out nails with it, and that kind of vibe. So he's kind of sort of playing that because he showed the hammer in the actual video itself here. Um, he showed the hammer with the laser coming out of it. I'm not entirely sure if he's also talking about like how humanity also has the propensity to look at everything at every problem as if it was a nail. So a lot of the problems we have have like a single minded application to it, right? Where it's like, okay, just blow it up. Okay, just like sort of cauterize it. Okay, burn it. Okay, that, that kind of vibe. So like a, a, a laser, you know, has a, a wide range of applications where you can cauterize things, you can uh, burn things, you can cut things, you can that kind of thing. But it almost seems like it's all for the same sort of thing, right? But it really isn't, but it's all for the sort of, they're, they're all the same sort of thing. So it's almost like the way we create tools is to, to sort of uh, uh, solve a wide array of problems with a single a single tool essentially um i don't know that's just at least my my mind just going everywhere with that anyway let's uh carry on though we're going back into the chorus over write a letter with no paper you could fix anything with a laser I like the flippant notion in the way he says, now that is a powerful cat. And he's also saying it somewhat uh, uh, sarcastically, but somewhat authentically and truthfully as well, where it is a powerful cat, right? That we've let the cat out of the bag and now there's no way to catch it. It's now just running rampant and there's no way to catch it, right? It's moving super, super fast, right? Um, but then what I like about that is that it does have a little bit of that sort of sarcastic element to it where it's a bit scary skeptical essentially it's like now that the cat's out of the bag right how long until we're able to eventually we're going to have to put the cat back in the bag right because it's causing a little too much mayhem do you know what I mean? I think the cat's getting a little too curious. And I think we are at that age in civilization where we are getting a little too curious with things in terms of bioweapons, in terms of uh, uh, um, sort of uh, viral uh, um, um, sort of technology, in terms of gain of function and making viruses stronger and shit like that. We're getting a little bit, we're playing God a little too much. And now I'm not entirely sure we are able to sort of rein that back in. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, carry on. Now that is a powerful cat. You could get a robot limb for your blown off limb. Later on, the same technology can automate your gig. As awesome as it is. Wait, mm. it gets awful. You could split an atom really nearly. If it's energy that can be used for killing, then it will be. It's not about a better knife, it's chemistry and genocide and medicine for tempering the heck of a projector light. Land mines, Agent Orange, leaded gas, cigarettes, cameras in your favorite corners, plastic in the wilderness. We cannot be trusted with the stuff that we come up with. The machinery could eat us, we just really love our buttons. Um, technology, focus on the other shit. 3D printed body parts, dehydrated onion dip. You could buy a jet ski from a cell phone on a jumbo jet. T-C-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y, it's the ultimate. Okay, so I like that. So over here, this is now the last verse. Obviously, you could get a robot limb for your blown off limb. That's correct, right? Augmentation, augmentation, uh, augmenting body parts is actually really, really cool. It's very, very clever. But if you actually think of the automation in terms of we can create that kind of thing, right? And we can start automating all different things. Um, all of these very powerful tech companies who control these kind of things and things like the neural link right do you have full control of your own sort of faculties do you have full control of your own mind right could that not sort of circumvent your own faculties and sort in a, in a way control you so yes the technology is, is very impressive it's got some very beneficial and positive applications but it can very very quickly have some very negative applications because now it's just a limb eventually it will be an entire body that's run with ai right and then they don't need you anymore 
essentially. So that's basically why he's playing with that. So yes, it's, it always starts off with the greatest of intentions. Humanity is always like that. We always have great intentions for something. The reason we develop something, the reason we do something is always for the greatest of intentions. Our curiosity always starts. The beginning processes is that I'm going to develop something that is going to be world change. I'm going to develop something that is going to change the world, right? But as you do that, and as you get more bigger and more powerful, right? Um, you sort of get corrupted, you get corrupted by lobbies, you get corrupted by governments, you get corrupted by that kind of thing. And sort of your, your uh, morality changes around that particular thing. And then it becomes like the highest bidder kind of game, right? And then your application that was meant to be for something really in, like brilliant and ingenious and it was supposed to benefit humanity lands up really just uh, um, being worse off for humanity very much like the cell phone cell phone was an incredible piece of technology specifically the smartphone was a great piece of technology for humanity but right now it's dumbing humanity down to such an extraordinary level it is unbelievable and not even to speak of the division that it's creating in humanity and all the algorithms that put push just one sort of echo chamber towards different groups of people People based on what they like because it makes them ad, uh, advertising money. The fact that you can monetize people, the fact that people have become the product of these tech companies through their products is actually quite scary, essentially. So the application could be brilliant. The application could have started off with good intent, but as it grows bigger, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Anyway, later on, the same technology could automate your gig. Obviously, because that's what I'm talking about. So basically, I talk. There's multiple applications to certain things. So there's very cool things that you could use this technology. It's you know, it's, it, it can the code could be sort of transferred across, or the actual functionality can be transferred across uh, to something that is in your home, right? Um, as awesome as it is, wait, it gets awful. We literally just spoke to that before we even got to that. Uh, you could split an a atom at willy nilly. Yes, well, we've played a lot with that. We've done, I don't know, a couple of thousand nuclear tests, right? After World War II, after we dropped the uh, um, the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, we then went and did what what the Bikini Island uh, uh, test, which affected all of the the uh, uh, sort of native inhabitants around that island. And it's like, nah, oh, well, we're just doing nuclear testing. It doesn't matter whether we're fucking destroying other people's lives. Um, if it's energy that can be used for killing, then it will be. It's like, yes, absolutely. If we can use it to kill people, why not? Actually, it's the most profitable, profitable form um, of energy. And it's the most profitable form of um, um, technology because it just goes and gets destroyed. It adds no benefit to the populace. This is the crazy thing about uh, this kind of thing. And this is why it is so profitable is because it costs hundreds of millions of dollars to develop these death machines that either sit on the runways and don't they're not used to maintain them costs of fortune to fuel them costs of fortune um, and then they don't get used and if they do get used they get destroyed so they, they get to make new ones it has no real life application that is beneficial to humanity and to humanity's tax paying money right other than death there's absolutely no application and there's no benefits to death, essentially, outside of you defending your own territory, essentially. Um, but you've never had to do it specifically in the United States. You've never had to fucking do that, uh, essentially. So what happens? You've got to ship it abroad. Anyway, um, if it's energy that can be used for killing, then that's what it will be. It's not about a, a better knife. It's chemistry and genocide. Yeah, so it's not about a better knife because a better knife is actually uh, quite a sort of rudimentary type technology in the sense that I need to be up close and personal and I need to actually see my enemy's eyes when I kill him. I'd rather him be at a distance, right? So this doesn't quite feel like a moral quandary that I have to deal with, right? It's kind of like a video game. I can just see this all on the screen and I can just sort of blow shit up, right? And uh, that's it. Um, we, and, and then we can sort of, we, we justify it away because it's not literally at our doorstep, right? And that was actually a lot of the uh, misconception with the Cold War because the Cold War, everyone keeps calling it a Cold War, but in the regions where proxy wars were being fought, it was very much a fucking hot war. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it was a Cold War because Russia and the United States weren't actively in a live fire, cold, uh, hot war situation. But there were a lot of proxy wars that were fought through other nations and other groups and things like that. Um, like in Cuba and the Bay of Pigs and things like that. Lots of people died. Lots of people lost their lives because of this Cold War. Right, which was very much a hot war, but because it's not on our doorstep, it never seems uh, um, like uh, a war is ever happening. Right, As much like World War One and much like World War Two, um, it never felt like you were in it if you weren't in the regions where the fighting was happening. It always felt very far away. Essentially, it almost feels like now it's like, are we in World War Three or are we not in World War Three? The fighting isn't happening here in our doorstep, so it's very easy to be flippant about it and just sort of like turn away from it. I like, know oh, it hasn't started yet, but if you go to sort of like those regions, if you go to like Ukraine and Russia and you go to the Middle East and things like that, it very much feels like it started. You know what I mean? If you're in that area, right, it's very much a hot war. It's very much a live fire type war. So it's very easy when you're far removed from the conflict, it's very easy to sort of be very, uh, uh, um, sort of dismissive of it, right? But that's just human nature, right? The, uh, and medicine for tempering the heck out of the projector light, uh, uh, the heck in the projector light, that's very fucking cool. I actually kind of think that when they're talking about medicine, tempering the heck out of the, in the projector light is basically, so like your brain and your eyes, essentially, which plays into sort of like um, the either the delusion or the chemistry change in your brain through fucking uh, um, antidepressants and things like that. All a money-making fucking racket. The pharmaceutical game. What was the book that I actually read? It was called Pharmaceutical. Sorry, give me a second. I'll tell you exactly which book that was. Pharmocracy. Um, really, really good book in terms of like how um, specifically in the United States with the big... Uh, big pharma over there, how they actually created an industry that made billions. And in order to create an industry that makes billions, you need a population that is sick. You need to create diseases that aren't there in order to sell product, right? And uh, it, it's actually it's actually ridiculous. Anyway, you can read the book. It's actually quite thing. So obviously playing into that, again, it's just, it shows you the malevolence of men. It shows you the perniciousness of um, humanity when it, plays into a capital on steroids type ideology and um, sort of like free market framing, essentially, where it's like in order for a handful of people to make an exorbitant amount of money, right, we need to exploit uh, it needs to be at the 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 d sort of like demise of the rest of the population. They will become the people. They will become the guinea pigs that make us money, right? And then we will sell them to them. It's the the deception is almost. Uh, um, more infuriating in terms of like they play it off as compassionate, they play it off as they are there to help you, you know what I mean? And the thing is that they'll always tell you, follow the science, follow the science, follow the science, follow the science. And at a certain stage in our humanity, you know, that was very real. Following the science was a thing you should do. But when it gets corporatized and when it gets politicized, right, the science means nothing anymore, right? Because you follow the science and you don't find the science. And then afterwards, when you follow the money, lo and behold, there lies the science. That's the fucking problem that we have. And that's again, playing into how man just has let this go. We've let the cat out of the bag and now we can't control it, right? It's been, it's been, our, our institutions have been poisoned. Our medical institutions have been poisoned. Our faculties have been poisoned. Our universities have been poisoned. Our politics have been poisoned. Everything, the baseline is literally make more and more and more money at the expense of other people. Okay, um, technology focuses on other, so we cannot be trusted with the stuff that we have come up with, 100%. The machinery could eat us, we just really just love our buttons, 100%, right, if we're talking about the AI. Um, technology focus on other shit, um, 
3D printed body parts, dehydrated onion dip. All of this is kind of like synthesized. All of this is artificial. None of this is real anymore, right? Everything is so superficial. Everything is so is is pumped with uh, 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 chemicals. It's literally everything is designed to make the population sick. If you just look at how Western populations are now, we're mentally ill. We're physically ill. We're depressed. We're lonely. We're uh, uh, um, addicted. We're addicted to technology. Technology, we're distracted, we, we don't find any purpose or meaning in our lives anymore, and it's all a culmination of the very, very beginning of technology, which began with that one tool and that one fire uh, that one tool and that fire and that wheel, and off we went, and there was no way to stop us. And now we are in in a, in a perilous state, let's put it that way. Um, although it doesn't feel like it because, you know, you're sitting in your comfy, cozy house and, you know, it, it feels all fine, but we really are in a dire situation. So all of this technology could have been used and a lot of it was used for uh, um, very positive things, but obviously it can obviously also still get very manipulated uh, by human beings and a positive thing can very quickly turn ugly. Um, you could buy a jet ski from a cell phone and on a, um, on a jumbo jet technology, it's the ultimate, right? Where yes, to a certain degree, it is the ultimate to a certain degree. It's very, very impressive stuff. Uh, but in the hands of very nefarious players, it can also be a tool for the complete destruction of human human civilization. Now let's just go straight back into that last um, chorus over there, and yeah, let's go. That's the Blackbird. Very cool plane, though. Very cool. Now that is a powerful oh, cat. cat. Sick song. Sick song. Sorry, I know that that was quite a long reaction. I apologize about that. Hopefully nothing throws. But uh, really, really cool. What I do like about that, where he actually talks, uh, uh, you know, with regards to nature, nature being a beautiful thing, and then we taking the, 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 the powers of nature, like sort of the atom and um, everything else that you would get from like uranium, right? Uh, uh, and uh, um, all those kind of things. And we took those things that could be really benefit, really beautiful things from nature that we could have used for the better, we are now using to destroy nature, right? So this whole playing into, playing into um, man finding, and also if you think about design, right? A lot of uh, um, creative concepts and interpretations and um, design structures come they are inspired by nature, much like the bird was with the 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 plane. The plane. We use nature for a lot of architectural designs. Well, at least we used to. Now we actually at a certain stage that um, architecture is very clean cut and cold, and um, it's been sort of very sort of corporatized to a certain degree that. Um, you don't have any more of an affinity to it. Why you had, a, why you have such great affinity to places like Rome and places that are so beautiful with such beautiful architecture is because it was the the it, it represented a talented, skilled populace, right? That built beautiful things, right? Over an immense amount of time through a lot of blood, sweat, uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Right, and that you could sit back and stand in awe, and because you are from that region, you're like, because this is so, I, w I am willing to defend this because this is so beautiful, right? Because we built beautiful things back in the day, and we were, uh, um, we, we wanted to defend the beautiful things that we built. And now today, we don't build beautiful things anymore, we build very cold cut things because everything's for profit and everything is needs to be done quickly and everything needs to be done uh, um, uh, purely for uh, um, sort of function and not for sort of intrinsic beauty, right? And through that, although you know it's a human progression, through that a lot of people sort of disconnect 
from where they are. That's why people don't really like the cities. People usually yearn to go to the countryside because as human beings, we always, we're always looking for something beautiful. We want to look outwards at something that's beautiful. And we want to be in awe of something that's beautiful because there's a lot of value in beauty. There's a lot of value in beautiful architecture. But when you just see sky rises all over the show that it's just these rectangular things, right? There's no affinity to it, which means that if something like that had to be destroyed or, so, or someone had to sort of... Uh, um, threaten um, its existence the likelihood of the population wanting to defend that is not going to be that that high because of the fact it's not, it's not beautiful anyway you know what i mean um and that kind of thing so it's, it's it kind of removes the population um from uh, the 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 their actual sort of home and their environment and it's almost by design in terms of like this is the money game. You're outside the money game. We control the money game. We're the top dogs. We're the S&P 500 CEOs, right? And we own all of this. Don't have any affinity or, t- or attraction or attachment to this because none of this belongs to you, right? Where back in the day, the cathedral was part of the populace. The churches were part of the populace. You know, there's the, 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 the arches, the bridges, everything was part of the populace. They could say they were in awe of it. It was theirs that would defend that. But anyway, I'm going off, uh, um, off uh, um, the script over here. Anyway, that's about that. You guys let me know what you think down below. That's a first time reaction. So um, I know I might have gone off in many different directions and I apologize about that, but you let me know what you think down below and I'll catch you tomorrow with more. I was actually gonna do three today, um, but these are just so long. We might actually extend this over four four days. We'll see how it goes. Tomorrow we'll do uh, uh, another two or three. I'll try and do three tomorrow. But uh, I'll do another two and see how long. If it takes like, if it's like two hours, if it's like an hour per reaction, we might just do like sort of two a day because these ones get a bit hard and then uh, they get a bit tiresome essentially. Uh, um, and I'd rather break that up so we always fresh when reacting to it. So you guys let me know what you think down below. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.